My favorite place to go to when I was, when I was little was the bookstore for story time. And I always cashed in my reward charts for books. I loved bedtime stories. It was my time with my mom or dad. It was when busy time stopped and time traveling started on my safe little bed. I remember feeling important to choose all the fun adventures that I got to go on. I would wear superhero masks and superhero capes, acting out superpowers like other kids would around the world would. After I learned to read to myself, I insisted I would be the reader of the books. The problem was, my mom and dad would only sit still for one or two stories. <laughs> the, local, the local bookstore said no. Something about kids not being able to command an audience. Finally, my mom found a literacy nonprofit organization. The director, Miss Robin, admitted I was very young, but supported my love of reading and said we could start small and give it a try. Yes, it's ripple time. <laughs> this is my chance to go to schools and read to kids who are ready to read. I remember going to my first school. I was seven years old. We were driving up there and we pull up and it's this huge school, way bigger than mine. And there are these big, scary Harry Potter looking gates. And all the kids are bigger than me. I was really nervous and sick to my stomach. I reminded myself many times that day that superheroes must be strong. I didn't need my red cape. A few months later, I was reading to schools every month and getting lots of kids excited about reading. Miss Robin even sent me envelopes, envelopes full of thank you drawings from kids telling me they loved reading at home now. It felt so good to help people. Mission accomplished. Then I met the girl. <laughs> I had just finished reading a fun book to a classroom of 10 year olds at a school in Compton. And my Grammy made puppets of my favorite story characters. And I was on fire. I was now brave enough to have a question and answer at the end of story time. And the girl sitting in the middle of the group asked me a question. She asked me, how can you read so well if you're only seven years old? With a proud smile, I told her, I have a cool library of books at home. Then it happened. I heard her mumble, oh, OK, I don't have any books at home. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't move. I wanted to leave. I looked at my mom to please help me. I barely made it to the car before I was burst into tears, crying and demanding that we would drive home and give all my books to her. The real truth said in on the drive home that books are really expensive and that we couldn't afford to give mine away. My mom gave me a hug and she said, don't worry, we'll find another way. And I guess we did. Um, I had a birthday and I just got this, be I got the best idea for it. We would have a milk and bookies party where everybody would bring a book instead of presents. And we would make superhero capes, we'd draw superheroes, and everybody got milk and cookies. We also got I Don't Need Books button. At the end of the party, I collected over 500 books, which exceeded my goal of 300 books. I gathered up some friends who were ready to help, and we drove to a ho local hospital and gave all the books to kids fighting cancer. So I went back to the school in Compton, several times to read, actually, secretly hoping to find the girl with no books. I never saw her again. But I can tell you this. I always have books in my book bag to give it to kids that really want books at schools. Always. Robert F. Kennedy once said, it's the tiny ripples that make up the big waves. And I have a similar thought to that. I think kids are like tiny ripples in the ocean. And if you tell an idea to one of them, you could create a humongous wave or tsunami. Now, I'm 10 years old. I'm double digits. And it still is great to get lost in an amazing book. I still volunteer with Miss Robin, and I gave my ride cape to my little brother, who thinks he has supersonic speed abilities. <laughs> I've learned entrepreneurial skills, like how to raise money, go after grants, and ask for tons of help. I'm working with cool people with big hearts who are helping me donate thousands of books to build libraries in Peru, the Philippines, 
and my next stop is a book and boot drop in Guatemala. But most importantly, I've learned that nobody in the world has superpowers. And the real heroes don't find their magic in a shiny cape. The power is right here and right here. The power is in all of us. We just have to find our special skills and decide to share them. Thank you. <laughs>